to Shahai Tam Mu Chin Shung Shou. In Korea in 1999, there's been a horrible murder. Three men robbed a home late at night. They killed an old woman. Brutal modus operandi is not the point. Instead, the killers were three teenagers under the age of 14. This news shocked the nation. It only took the police five days to catch the killer. The killer confessed in person. In the following year, Mr. Choi was promoted to a higher position who solved the case. A recently discharged soldier took his place. Captain Wong looks careless, but he's controversial and he's got away with cases. He was working on a case that day. Got a call. The informant was a local gangster. He said his friend Su Yun was the murderer, but he has no proof. Su Yun only talked about it after drinking. His word isn't very credible. But Captain Wong retrieved the file from the police station. In the transcript, Captain Wong found a lot of suspicious places to clear up the confusion and the very real possibility of a grievance. He decided to reopen the case. Follow the clues. He visited the parents of those who confessed to the crime. The sister of one of the confessors told Captain Wong her brother is mentally retarded and can't read. Her brother once mistook a pesticide for a drink. He also killed his mother. Since he can't read, then how did he write his plea? The more Captain Wong thinks about it, the more ridiculous it seems. So he came to the prison, interviewed three juveniles still serving their sentences. He started by asking the teenager who admitted in his plea to prying the door with a screwdriver to do it all over again. He couldn't get the door open again. With all his strength, he wrote out the name of another one of the teenagers, make him read it, and said as soon as he read it, Captain Wong rewarded him with 100,001. The boy looked down and froze. In the end, he could only shake his head. <laughs> At Captain Wong's urging, they told the truth. <laughs> Captain Choi wants to solve the case quickly. Three juveniles who had nothing to do with the incident were treated as criminals. Hear the ugly truth. Captain Wong's heart burned with rage. He was determined to help these boys. Captain Wong's found Mr. Choi. They didn't say much. Captain Wong was direct about his purpose. Captain Wong asked Mr. Choi how he could have done this to those child. Captain Wong is very angry. The masks were completely torn off by both sides. They've officially declared war. Captain Wong first found the daughter of the old woman who was murdered. Yeon is the witness. After learning the facts, she didn't recognize the face. Three teenagers were judged to be murderers just because of the calluses on their hands. There's a real possibility that the three teenagers were wrongly accused. Captain Wong contacted the gangster who reported the killer in the first place through the clues he gave. He managed to capture Su Yun. Through Su Yun, Captain Wong captured the other two. There was no coercion at the police station. Su Yun confessed to the crime. That night, they took drugs. At first, they just ran out of cigarettes. But under the influence of alcohol and drugs, the three of them decided to do something crazy. They broke into a closed store. The mistress sleeps on the floor. To keep them quiet, just gag them. The old woman in the back room suddenly rebelled. They blocked the old woman in the same way when they were ready to go back. But the three of them realized that the old woman was no longer breathing. They tried to save the old woman. After realizing it didn't work, they can only run away. After catching the real culprit, the three teenagers were indeed wrongly accused. And that's when the leader called Captain Wong into his office. The leader is very angry. <laughs> Mr. Choi then bowed his head and begged Captain Wong for peace. And the secretary even shamelessly said, if Captain Wong is overturned, not only will it ruin the team's honor, such behavior would also call into question the credibility of the nation's police. And Captain Wong didn't give in to them. He's adamant about turning over the evidence to the prosecution. Captain Wong doesn't want to wrong a good man. Finally, he gave Hyeong the recording of the real killer confessing to the crime. Hopefully, she'll be able to testify at the trial. And she closes the door. She doesn't want to deal with it. The next day the prosecutor came to the police station. But this isn't a trial. It's a condescending judgment. Three real killers sitting with three wrongly accused teenagers. And Captain Wong can only listen to the conversation from the outside. The man in the center is in front of the teenagers to falsify their alibi for the killers. He told the killers that on the day of the murder, you two are on an ocean-going ship, and you're in Seoul. Then he took out a picture of the old woman when she was murdered. He exclaimed to the teenagers, that's what you do. Captain Wong can't listen to this anymore. Captain Wong barged in and screamed at the prosecutor. And the prosecutor condescendingly asked Captain Huang, do you want to make an enemy of the entire Korean police force? Before the supreme judicial power, the boys are very scared. Once again, they've admitted they're murderers. <laughs> Some 
thoughts. Even if he is the real killer, fear in such a world, he can't believe the DA is helping them. And at this time, the justice that Captain Wong has always stood for has been destroyed. He took his family away from here afterward. Ye Ong's been chasing him, and he ignored her. Captain Wong left this place with determination. Ye Ong's daughter accidentally opens the recording. Captain Wong sent her. Ye Ong instantly heard the voice inside. The same man who killed her mom. But when she tried to help Captain Wong again, Captain Wong has given up. Ye Ong came to the prison. She made an appointment with the wrongly accused teenager. <laughs> Sixteen years later, Captain Wong is now gray-haired. I don't know how it happened. That day he met the three boys at the station. After release from prison, they make their own way. Mentally challenged Shu was suspected of stealing money. By the time the Guardian arrived at the police station, Captain Wong found out that the Guardian was actually Huai Ying. She's the one who wrongly accused three teenagers. She's regretted it all these years. Now she wants Captain Wong's help. He wants to clear their names, erase their murder charges. <laughs> Captain Wong says he doesn't want to help, but it's something that's stuck with him all these years. While Captain Wong was having dinner with them, he's got a lot of feelings. Captain Wong understands that Huai Ying has helped them a lot. The three were released from prison without too much resentment. They're very optimistic. They still have the same innocence they had back then, but now they're entering society. Because of this layer of murderers, the world will always be on guard against them. And the people who should have been punished, now they're on top. So Captain Wong decided to do something about it. The road to justice is always difficult. Upon learning that Captain Wong is going to flip again, his family and daughter are threatened. Mr. Choi has become a prosecutor. He used his power to prevent him from continuing his investigation. Captain Wong is very determined not to be upset. Captain Wong quit his job. He's going to appeal to the Supreme Court. In the courtroom, Ye Yong used evidence gathered over the years to prove that these teenagers weren't her mother's killers. And the evidence, it's all been resolved by the prosecutor and his lawyers. The first trial quickly ended in failure. The only proof they have now is to find the real murderer of that year, make them confess their crimes in court. But since that incident, Su Yun is free, but he's got major depression. He passed away soon after. Another one emigrated, now only Lee, is still living in Korea, and he's been gone for years. Then, Captain Wong then searched for Lee. In the system's changed names, finally, Captain Wong finally found Lee. Who had disappeared. Now he's changed his name to Ka Chun. Lee is married and has a daughter. He started a new life. Captain Wong found him. He told Lee, the case is past the 15-year indictment period. Even if he pleads guilty in court, and the justice system will never pursue him again. However, he was worried about his wife knowing about his past. Lee never wanted to appear in court to plead guilty. Until this day, Mr. Choi's smart-ass threats against Lee's family emphasize that he's not going to testify. Mr. Choi's behavior makes Lee want to protect his family. He doesn't want his family threatened. At the second trial, Lee showed up. Mr. Choi was very confident at first. With Lee telling the truth, he started to panic and get angry. He's very disgusted with Captain Wong and Lee's behavior. The pain that the three teenagers had suppressed for years could finally be vented at this time. Justice won at the last minute. Mother can rest in peace. The demons have finally been exorcised. Teenagers are truly free. <laughs> <laughs>